Hi, it's Jez here from Nigeza Creates and I am so excited to be part of Tracy Fox's Creep on June collaboration. I um, I, I, I kind of danced around the living room when she um, asked me to join in. I was so chuffed. So I have loved making my project using the Halloween Mega Mini Mega Matchbox Mini kit and with a name like that as you expect you make lots of matchboxes they're big matchboxes <laughs> um, um but um they're great easy to put together tracy did a fabulous video um the first one in the collaboration i will list um everybody that's taking part we're kind of halfway through now um and um, so do check out everybody's videos if you haven't already and um, stick around to watch the others. Go around and like, subscribe, um, etc. Um, the kit's massive and fabulous and it matches Dark Compendium, which I love. Um, so I thought um, that these would make really good if you're if you're into um giving away gifts at halloween these would be lovely little um trick-or-treat boxes i've just got all the femora that i've cut out ready to decorate um my make with um but when my kids were little i would have um i did do we just used to decorate the whole house for halloween and we give all the kids um, a little party bag. These would be fabulous party bags with a few little chocolate pumpkins in, chocolate eyeballs, maybe a little plastic spider, something like that in. Absolutely fab. I made them all up and then I watched Tracy's video and um, she put a, put a handle on hers. So I did that. Thought that was quite cute. Um, great for storage at the moment. They're just, they've just got all the um, bits of um, ephemera that I've, you know, cut up ready to use. So let's move all these out of the way. And this is what I've made. Now, this is the, the faux book. Um, it had scraps written on it, um, but for my make, um, I didn't want it to have scraps on. So I've just decorated that with bits from the kit and open it up. So we've got be afraid, be very afraid. And um, I even covered the back up as well. And then we've, I've, decorated the inside there and it is a journal it's an 84 page three signature journal so i am going to show you how i made this i don't show the decorating of the pages um, on camera um, i will stick around to the end because after making the journal i do do a flip through and if there's any bits that you see in this journal that you would like me to video. Um, I'll do that because I have, I am making a second one there. So I've got the sort of signatures ready there for making a second one. So I can easily film any little bits that you might need um, to see or like to see. So let's, let's see how I did it. So here's the cover of my little mini journal so i am um, it's it's nice and stiff so i'm going to show you how i made this um so i took the batch box and i just used the slip and i cut the end off have i got the end hanging about still so i can show you the the bit that i cut off i do so i just cut that bit off so I left a little bit of it on, you know, for cutting purposes. Um, and so the matchbox, I printed this out at 100% um, borderless. Um, and this one, I didn't ask it to be borderless. So it's ever so slightly smaller. And um, that's uh, what's happened. Oh, no, it's still going. Suddenly it looked like it had, had frozen. Um, so that way, this book, I'll show you on the one that matches, the book cover will then be ever so slightly smaller than, than the matchbox. So, 
it fits in only ever so slightly but you know enough okay so it just depends what your printer does if so i know some people don't have printers that do um borderless so in that case you know just reduce it by a couple of percent and um it should be good i can't tell you how much because i can only speak for my own printer so this is printed on 200 gsm navigator card i don't know what that is in poundage if you don't measure your paper but it's it's not real thick card but it's not real thin <laughs> that's a really good explanation um and then i use because this um kit matches um the dark compendium which i love so this is a sheet from dark compendium and i printed it four per page so that the pattern was sort of in a scale that that would be right for this size of a book so i like this because it's like the fly sheets you get on the inside of books so um and i thought I love the colours in this. I just love it. So I just thought that made a nice um, inside. So again, this is on the 200 GSM um, cardstock. And then I just glued them together and I've left them overnight with a book on it um, so that they properly weld. And then that way, um, when you when you bend it, it, it basically becomes a solid piece of cardstock. So then when you bend it, um, you don't get that slippage that one would slide over the other if it was still a little bit wet. OK, so I'm just going to cut this, cut this down. There we go, that'll do. So that is binning all this. That is that. And then we need to score down these lines. So I'm just going to get my middle school board rather than get my massive one in. And I'm just going to use the line that I have drawn in there. And I'm, measure, I'm making sure top and bottom are on there and give it score down and do the same. Uh, and now that will bend nicely shouldn't crack well my cardstock didn't crack so that's all i can really comment on is that mine didn't crack um i suppose you know different quality cardstocks act differently so give that a bit of a burnish there we go and we've got our we've got our our book and i'm just gonna So I put all my boxes together and then I saw Tracy's first video and she put a little sort of handle on hers for getting it out and it's like genius. I did then make one. I then went back and I made one with a pull, which I really like. However, I'm not sure about these boxes right now. I think these ends need a little bit more of a trim because that one's not going in. That is, we've got plenty of room that way, but we're we've still got a bit of. So I'm going to take a little smidge off this. I'm basically taking the whole of that brown line off, I think. Which was really there for folding. So that should now work. Yeah. So you take the whole of that brown line off and that, that will fit in there nicely. So there we go. And then I just went round all the edges 
um, thinking it up, I used vintage photo. So just round all the edges. So then if it does crack a bit, it doesn't matter. And then because you've got white core there on your cardstock, definitely one. So cover that up. Nobody wants to see the white core. There we go. And then I just did it around the inside. I think vintage photo goes so well with these papers. I love the fact that this kit matches with the dark compendium, which is what I said to Tracy when she sent it. I was like, oh my God, it matches dark compendium. Love it. So it's really nice. I mean, I've already made a journal with the dark compendium, but it means I plan on making another one because that was a diddy one. This is even diddier. Um, I do plan on making a proper size one. No, look, I've got a bit of crack in there. Didn't in the other one. No cracking in this at all. So there you go. And, um, and so now I've got ephemera, which is brilliant. Right, so then I made my signatures. So I've got three signatures already made for this one. So I'm just going to quickly show you how I put a signature together and what I did. So these are the journal pages in um, compendium, dark compendium four. And I printed them um, not borderless, just ordinary. And I printed six to a page. I've got a HB printer and it allowed me to print six per page. And so when they were printed six per page, the um, I've already printed them. They are the perfect size to fit in. I did trim ever so slightly, um, but basically they were the right size. So I printed, there were, there were six sheets that have um, patterns on. Um, so pulling them in. So I printed them all off so that I had six sheets. I don't know where the others are. Um, so that is, um, so I have uh, two of these in each signature. I wanted one at the front of a signature and then one in the centre of the signature. So that is how I decided on my signatures. Did I do it that way or did I do that one on the front? I'm trying to think now. They don't have to be the same, Jez. I know, but you know what I'm like? I do like them to be the same. Yeah, so that's what I did. So then I cut some dyed paper i use two sheets in each signature and it does depend what size these come out as and that will depend on your printer but my size is two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths that is what i did so i cut them down to that and then i wanted some book page and i have got quite a few little little books so this is a um german english dictionary this is a swedish english dictionary um and this book here which is the one i went for in the end um is 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 i'm not really sure what it is even when i read what it is i don't know what it is Threading tools and gauges of all types. That's what this is. And it's just full of all sorts of nonsense. Um, but I liked these pages and that's what I went for. So somewhere in here I have cut. There we go. I've cut the threads. There we go. So. Cut that. I need three. So 
pull out another one. And for me, because this is like Halloween, um, for me it was like it's a little bit scientific. I just ripped it. A little bit scientific. And it's a little bit like I kind of imagined like being Dr. Frankenstein and, um, you know, building your monster. And, um, and, um, having all these sort of calculations going on that was that was that was where my thoughts were so folding in half were were just there at just below the two mark so i'm going here and i'm, I'm gonna go I'm going to come over from the edge a little bit and then go on the two. And that's me. That's my page over there in the right, in the right bit. And then I'm going to go slightly back with this side because I want the flip. So. going down here because I don't want to end up cutting off where we flip so going down there for me flip so it's going under so if I do need to cut a bit of that off the other side is well under so we'll be we'll be all right and then I want to fold over the end because I'm going to form a pocket, but I want the edge to be, I want the edge to be all right. I've only got seven pages, so we haven't got, we haven't got many more to do, but I just wanted to show you what I did. And it was just a matter of looking at what I got and um, choosing accordingly. So that's going to be a wee pocket. So, of course, I then had to ink. And this book, I think it's from the 50s. So it's not hugely old. And um, so it needs a little bit of help with its ageing, I felt. So just went round the edges. And because it was, and I actually inked round the edges of all of these. And on the inside, I just did ink smushing. So I just got my glass mat. I just took my vintage photo ink mat, ink pad. And I just smushed it, sprayed it with water and then dipped that in and then there were white bits, so then I just took my blending, ink blending brush and went over it. That was what I did there. And then I inked around it all. But because it's so small pages, it didn't take very long at all. Not long at all. So that's that. So I love it that way. So cover book page so we need to fold this in half I like using the the ridge on the little mini trimmer there so cut those two together oh I had to trim the oh I needed to trim this down I forgot that bit Burke. so height wise we are three little sixteenths under three. So I'm going to take equal amount off the top and the bottom. I'm going to have to re-glue this, but you've already seen me do it. So I'm not, I'm not actually worried about that now. So like I've taken all the glue off that, so it needs re-sticking. But as I say, I am not bothered about that right now. So that, that. Then the next page. In the Matchbox kit, 
I haven't got one handy, so I'm going to nick one to show you. I'm not going to nick it because I'm going to. So you've got this um, whole sheet with um, Sleepy Hollow and they've got printed. So I thought, oh, they're cute little pages. So that was my next page. Um, you're going to have to pretend I've put that in because I didn't get another one ready. Um, and then and then I did another book page. And then some music sheet. Now it's it's little. So I've got a little hymnal. So we've got small bits of um, music. So I'll go to where I've taken out already. So oh, got two out there, Jess. Got two out there. So again, it was just a matter of um, taking this down. So. And a little sheet of music and because it's such a diddy um book having that little hymnal is perfect and then that's your that's your middle page so that is how i sort of put the signature together and then you've got it protrudes out the center there so what i did was just those center bits so not the bit with the fold you'll find the printed book page doesn't need trimming and I just went two sixteenths under two and that was about right and that's how I got them okay there's something there that's a bit too tall or it might just be the way I've not done it so that's how I got my signatures ready So now we're going to sew them in. So I'm just going to show you if you already know how to do that bit, then you you can you can fast forward now this bit. Now these little bits that I trimmed off, I have I did do a little bit Corey clusters, so I, I thought they could go down the side of a page. I also cut one up, well ripped one into three and I thought they would make nice little accents later on when I'm decorating okay so now we need to make our template so I'm just gonna yeah I was figuring that will probably be the perfect size for making a template so this is about an inch wide so if I go up there to an inch that is just about perfect for this so yep yeah, that'll do nicely and this is, we're going to go one under, so a sixteenth under three is, is about right. We'll take another one off. So we'll go to three and seven eighths. That is. That is my spine. Okay. Now I want I'm doing three signatures, so I'm going to fold this in half. You could score it at half an inch if you want, but I find just folding works. So that's where the centre hole is gonna be, and then I'm going to fold this in half again so that way we get equidistance from the centre hole 
for the next signature and then the same distance then to your cover. So that's the line where my, my signatures are going in. And then we need to find the middle point this way. So I just fold it in half. Let's be a bit accurate, Jess. Fold it in half. So that is the point at which I want them to be. I'm finding a pen here. So I'm going to take my pen and I'm just going to put a little dot where those lines those lines meet and then to find the next one what I do is I fold it in half and then I fold that one in half so we're going three quarters So we want to ignore that first crease and it's the second crease. And that's where that hole and then we repeat on the other side. And that is how I know. So that is my template ready and I can use that on both books because it's going to be exactly the same on both books. So we're going to sew these signatures in that are ready. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, 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 fourteen is twenty eight. Three lots of 28s is 60, 70, 85, 84 pages going in there. Okay, so I need my little piercing mat. There we go. I need me all. I didn't get my book. My book binding kit out. So, I want to just hold this in place. I'm going to get a little, some wee clips. So, clip one at the top. Which one that's right in the middle, yeah. One at the top. And it'd be a good idea to write top. You could write bottom, but you don't really need to, as long as you've got top written on there, so that you know that you're doing it the right way up. And then I'm just going to stick me all straight down, making these holes. And I have not decorated the pages yet. There we go. So that's that's the holes all done in the back there. Okay, so now we need to do our holes in our signature. So we make sure the signatures 
are all in place. We can use the same. I'm going to go the middle one first. So we can use the same template. It's going to be ever so slightly longer. But that's OK. So I'm going to fold this in half. So we can pop that in there. Have the overhang just slightly. And that, and I clip on there, and I clip on the bottom. Some people use like giant um, paper clips and things, don't they? There we go. And then I slightly close. Some people have cradles, but I find if you just slightly close the book, you should come out. At the crease there we go and going in the exact same holes as was in before just going to stick that back in hold them in place so that is them all done and I will do the same for each of them and what I'll probably do is use the different holes because they might be slightly different they should be along the same line but you know user error so I'll go first holes along that one and make them the same and then the last hole in that one but you don't need to see me do them. We just need to see do do the one. Going to choose. Yeah, going to choose this colour. So rule of thumb: three times the height. Of your book signature. Let's take. That one. So I'll just thread my needle. So this is waxed thread. I bought a book binding kit and that's what it had in it. Okay, so we go in through the centre. This is the middle signature. Make sure we're the right way up. In through there the right way up yeah is my music the right way up yeah and the science thing yeah so there we go usually hold the strand down there and then we're going in through it now I'm just I'm just gonna don't know if you can see there trying to see if you can see on camera and I have my glasses on but they're standing proud a bit I want to flatten them down just notice that so I'm just going to give them a little bit of a flattened down I think I know. I'm probably going to hide this I can cut another spine bit out of this to cover it, which I may well do. Anyway, just wanted to do that. Just if those things are important to you, do it now. So let's go back in. We're not making new holes. We're going through the holes that are already made. And then we go back through the top. And I know some people find this bit quite scary. And it is to begin with. And then I've got, I've, I've took my glasses up and I'll go put them back down again. But now I, I, it doesn't scare me anymore. I'm just like quite confident in the process, she says. 
not been able to find the right hole. So you're not making new holes, you're going through the holes that are already there. Take these off now, because it might have moved a little bit in the taking in and taking out. So if we pull it all the way through first, that does help. Don't lose the end of that, but pull your needle through so you can then properly close this and then you'll find you'll go through or you'll miss but you can pick it up at the next signature feed them all in which on a small book like this is quite easy there we go i don't often make multiple signatures so there we go so that's that's that we're not too worried about being tight right now because we can tighten up afterwards there we go that's that and then we're going to go it's personal preference i think whether you go in through the top or you go back in through the middle i like going back in through the middle so don't split the thread that's already in there. You want to go next to it and make sure you're through the hole and then through that one. I have in my playlist got a, a dedicated video to sewing in signatures on a bigger one so if you need to see it on a bigger one then by all means check that out other people have done them i learned through watching other people there we go pull that through get your end through and then we can start pulling a bit tighter It's quite tight and then we feed our needle underneath the one that's there make sure that tail is the other side we'll take the needle off at this point check everything's nice and tight and I tie a double knot so we go left over right. And then we go right over left. You can tie the bow if you want. Or you can leave them and put dangles on. Or you can snip them. And that is the signature there. And then what I usually do is just go over with my bone folder and make sure it's all sitting nicely. Right, I'm going to snip these. So small journal, but still lots of journey space. Mind you, I've got, I'm going to put tags and ephemera and all sorts in it. So, but there will still be plenty of journaling space in there. So that is the first signature sitting in there. And I'm going to put the other two in in exactly the same way. So I'm going to do this though. Um, I might do it speeded up. Um, so if you want to slow it down, you can.
So that's that's them all sewn in. It's not too chunky at this stage, but it's going to have things added to it now. So that is all the signatures all sewn in. Really, really cute. To go in the box. So now I'm going to decorate and I have in these boxes, what have I got here? I have lots and lots of ephemera. So I took the tags, these are the tags, so they've all been backed on coffee dyed, tea dyed even, but actually these are probably coffee dyed because I used a really old sheet, so I liked the colour. Um, and these are the tags from Dark Compendium and I printed them two to a page. I think these are two to a page. These are the, the small ones that were all together. So I've got like two of everything. Um, but I've only done, done one half. And then I shrunk down all the ephemera. I think I've done some, I've done these four to a page so that they're really little. Um, and I have um, some that I've not cut out yet as well to use. So yeah, I did do them for to a page. Um, those ones aren't um, backed because they're, um, I thought these would be tags and journaling cards. So I've got them all, there we are, creep on June. Um, so I've got them all ready. Um, all right, so that's a full set and that's a full set. That's what I did. Mm -mm. So that's the set ready, ready to use. That's the set for the other one. There's a few extra in that that's not in this, which I may or may not use. So they're all ready to go. I did this last night whilst watching telly. Watch Waterloo Road. Oh my days, I was traumatised at the end of it. Um, not sure that I'm ready to watch the next episode. Um, I have, oh, well, that's the, that's the, those are the pages. So this is in the kit. I sort of put it together. Um, and that's what gave me the idea of making a journal myself. Um, here's the other boxes. I've got different bits in these. I think these are the full size ones. Yeah, these are the full size ones, which I thought would be great ephemera. I haven't they're printed on the back or some of them are copy dyed I think which I thought would do a full size journal so they're all ready to do that I quite quite like the fact that they're in one of these boxes um, that is like the flashcards and all the pumpkins and doodars I am digitally challenged, which is why I'm struggling here. Oh, and these are the envelopes. Um, I made all the envelopes up, ready to use. I did a policy policy closure on that one. Um, just, just, just for the hell of it, really. Hell of it. It's Halloween. Um, <laughs> I make myself laugh. Well, nobody else will. Um, so yeah, they possibly, I'm not sure if they would fit in the journal. They're like, yeah, they take up the entire page. So there might be something to pop in on the, uh, on the first page. So they could be a contender. Those definitely are. And then... These I probably won't use because um, they're a bit big. I like that. I so I, I doubled it over. I did a little bit of stamping on. Can you see? Spider alert. Spider alert. Turn away now if you don't like them. But I did a little bit of stamping on there. A few cobwebs. 
and that loved it loved it so i've got all these words i if i'm going to use any of these words they need shrinking down they're far too big so that's why i don't think these are going to be used and these are too big as well but they'll be grand for a full size journal love these circles but i've got them shrunken down somewhere so i can i can use them so putting them away so i am gonna get on and decorate and um show you it all when when it's done okay so now let's have a look at the journal so it is quite chunky um it does hold nicely inside the matchbox um so that's pretty good i had thought about uh, cutting out another sort of spine bit to cover this but actually i quite liked it having the the sewing there so i decided to to leave it on so um i used lots of the ephemera so i sort of shrunk them down i think i say this as i'm as i'm filming in the making cut them down uh, shrunk them down did four per page and um got this so um some of these this is you know from the dark compendium and um and I made my I made some little words myself. That's just a little tuck there with the Transylvania map on it. And that's a little envelope there. I've just done a little spooky. I've got a few stamps. I've got some broomsticks and some cobwebs, some a little spider, and um, some bats, which I really like. So this is an envelope flip. And um these are the bottoms of the boxes that are shrunk right down and they perfectly fit. So this envelope was done with this punch that I have had absolute years. This is woodware. I don't know if they still make it. There'll be other ones that you can get. I had it donkeys. Um, and when I made it, I thought, oh, I need to put something in it. And I just saw these little um, squares and spookily fortuitously they fit it in so liked that so these are my stamps so that's one of the one of the envelopes um there and i just in the envelopes i just put a little bit of coffee dyed paper so there's lots and lots of room in here for for journaling there's not a lot of room in it it's to stick any memorabilia i mean that's I guess you could put the odd ticket or, or what have you in here but um not an awful lot but um but yeah but i guess if it outgrew the box then you could um you could um just put a little ribbon around it that's that lovely sciencey type paper creep on june that is the hashtag um there, nice little side pocket another little flip i love these tags it's about three of them and um that just flips out there and um i use one of these little labels that are in the kit just folded it in half and create a little tuck spot on that side that's one of my little words that i created that's some of the stamps that i've got so yeah spider rot there's a few of these i um, hugely phobic about spiders, but I don't mind that black line drawing. I can cope with that. So, so I just did a few little bits of stamping around. My tip is, after doing this, if you're going to stamp on your pages, stamp on them before you sew the signatures in. They were a little bit tricky. Now this pocket was made so this this book one it was made using at the bottom and the side of the book and that's just i didn't do anything to that tag other than add a little bit on the top because i thought that little raven and that there was 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 enough again and i left the so these are all the dark compendium pages i just left them as they were that was from a tag and then I just put 
put in a couple of these bits. They're all being backed on coffee dyed paper and they were all shrunk down. She's dressed as a bat, so we got a few little bats. Little stamping, a little bit stenciling. I do find it really hard to leave a page with nothing. So that's again was a tag and I just put that little label in there to sort of match there. I had so much fun making this, I really did. So a couple of pages there that I didn't do very much on. That was hard, a little bit of a hint of your spider coming through there. Use that label for a pocket. And then I just did a bit of stamping on, on there and just put on there and then I just put strange and stranger on there a couple of little spiders and cobwebs around there so that's end of signature one beginning signature two so I just used one of those big journaling cards there as a side tuck just bung spooky in there made a hole put a tie on sits there nicely got a bigger version of that um i'm sure it's transylvania i can't remember i need my glasses but i'm sure that's what it is there we go here i just put that i've got a broomstick and because we have witches there and a bit of a, a bit of a kebab another one of those envelopes and it's got some coffee dyed paper in there as well. Just a bit of stamping on these pages. Um, and the same there. And then that's another one of those tags which I flipped out. And then a little tuck there, just a little bit in there. So we're at the center of the second signature. Another little side tuck there and um, added a bit of lace there because when I stamped um, that uh, that image there I'd left too much of a gap so put a bit of lace up it quite like it a little bit of stamping there another one of those envelopes with another so I just taped a bit of a bit of ribbon because I need it was lace so I needed something that would would fold up. So um, I couldn't put a tab on it. So I just stapled it. Well, I sort of did a little dab of glue and then a little staple. Hold it in place and then it folds over. And then that forms a little tuck on that side. Again there, so you know that there's a flap coming on the other side there. Got a spell on you. And that, another little broomy stick. So here we've got bats. Actually, so you see there's loads of space despite it being really small. Bit of mist stamping, but I don't think it matters. It's a junk journal. Another little pocket there with a couple of a map there. Oh, that's Transylvania. Or maybe the other one isn't. I knew I'd seen a map of Transylvania. Oh well. There we go. I'll poke that up there a bit. Um, and there we have uh, going into the last uh, signature. So I just put trick or treat there and Halloween there. Oh, I didn't ink that one. So I made these white, white printing in black. And I just used a bit of vintage photos to colour them. But I'd forgotten to colour that one. There we go. And here we go. So that is a pocket made out of the side of this one here we get spooky shrunken down version of that butt lady another one of those envelopes and there little 
Halloween. Just a few bats. Another little tuck there. That was a big postcard I just cut in half. I love the little raven. And then I just decorated this tag with a few little, few little bits. Some more stamping. Some more stamping. The ink came through, but I quite like that. And then I've decorated that tag with a couple of little bits. I hope it's visible. I discovered on my iPad you can kind of do that when you when you're watching a video and it zooms in. That's fancy. So I just did a bit of stamping on that one. A little bit of a spider. And then that's another little tuck there. And I decorated that one up with some of the elements. Stick it in there. There'll be a stamping, stenciling. Another one of those envelopes. I won't pull that one out. Little tuck on that side. Isn't she gorgeous? Love her. Some more stamping. Another little flip there with this beautiful arch. Bit of stenciling. And then we're at the last pocket there. I did a bit of bat, bat and spider there. Got Halloween there. Got spooky with those skulls. And then just the last couple of journeying cards. Some are back, some are printed. And that, that's my little, uh, my little journal in a box. So I hope, I hope you like that. I hope that inspires you to make a little mini journal. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And quite quick, weekend project, I'd say. Put this together. Really like it. So if there's any bits that you want me to show you how I did, then do let me know um, in the comments below. And I'll, um, I'll do a little video on some of the elements in them, if that's something you would like to see. So I do hope you carry on and watch everybody else's. I can't remember who's coming up tomorrow, but I will have everybody listed down below. And um, I'm going to make some more things with this kit because I just love it. Okay, bye for now. Don't forget to like and subscribe.